as mentioned in my previous video, I will be talking about the um, fundamentals of engineering exam and uh, the work uh, experience required by APIGA. So if you go to APIGA website and then click uh, apply and then become a member, then you will be um, seeing this one here. Um, so if you go to exams, and then go to fundamentals of engineering. So APIGA has an agreement with uh, NCES. Um, all um, confirmatory exams will be uh, administered by NCES in the US. So you have to register first with APIGA before registering with NCES to take the fundamentals of engineering exam. So it says here, um, do not register with NCES before applying to APIGA or you will be ineligible to write the exam. So if you go to NCES website, um, so this one, if you go exams, then fundamentals of engineering exam so you have one two three four five six seven eight so or seven and then other disciplines so if you are a graduate of um civil engineering then you you choose this if is -E civil and these are the coverage for the exam so you have mathematics and statistics uh, ethics and professional practice, engineering economics, statics, dynamics, mechanics of materials, uh, then uh, materials, fluid mechanics, surveying, water resources and environmental engineering, structural engineering, geotechnical engineering, transportation engineering, uh, construction engineering. So um this exam is similar to our licensure exam in the philippines except uh, the technical aspect of it like um so for um say uh for major engineering subjects it would cover from like statics strength of materials up to i think theory of structures so we'll go structural engineering so it will only um, the coverage for structural engineering is only like um, analysis of uh, statically determined uh, beams, columns, struts, and frames. So there is no um, actual uh, calculations um, that would be part of the um, professional practice exam. So the so i took my fundamentals of engineering exam um as well as the principles and practice of engineering. This one here, um, the one I took in uh, 2013, this is the exam, the last one, if you apply a license in the US. So basically this fundamentals of engineering exam and the principles and practice of engineer, these are the two exams required if you apply for a license in the US. But for APIGA, um, they will only require the fundamentals of engineering. This is basically just a confirmatory exam um, to make sure that you what you learn from uh, from your school is uh, equivalent uh, of um, like a Canadian uh, standard. So what I did in preparing for this exam, 
So let's go back to the uh, calories of the exam. So, uh, where is it? Oh, there's no more chemistry. I don't think there is. I think they updated the the coverage for this exam. Because last time I took this exam in, uh, you know, the 2000. So I first applied in October 29, 2011. But I deferred. Um, on that time because I don't have enough time to prepare. So I registered, I, I deferred it and uh, applied for the next uh, exam, which is on April 14th, uh, 2012. And um, I took a one week leave to prepare for that exam. And uh, it was a written exam. And you have to pass, I think, I think seventy five is the passing passing score. Uh, so it says here the if the exam includes written questions, the exam appointment time is six hours long and includes non disclosure agreement, two minutes tutorial, eight minutes, exam five hours and twenty minutes. Um I think uh, it changes. Um uh, so when they when they change the the like how they administer the exam before it was um, a written exam but now you can uh, take the exam in uh, like online and um, it was a it was i think 8 hour exam like 4 hour um in the morning 8 to 12 the the coverage would be um the general engineering and then uh, in the afternoon would be your discipline specific. So in the morning, the, the, the exam would uh, com comprise with, uh, so like algebra, trigonometry. And then before, I don't know why, they there's like changed the coverage of the exam before um, the exam includes um, thermodynamics, um basic electrical engineering um chemistry because i remember uh, there was a question about uh, uh, what's called like stoichiometry um balancing equations um and then for thermodynamics there was a question about uh um pressure and uh, like volume like i don't know i can't remember but the equation is PV equals MRT, something like that. So it's a good thing that now they remove that uh, remove that uh, subjects in the coverage because you can focus really on um, the, uh, the civil uh, um, subjects. Because before what I did was um, I calculated all the like like the odds of passing the exam without um, getting a correct answer for chemistry, thermodynamics, electrical, I have no idea. So um, it's just a waste of time if I will I spend studying that subject. And I mean, if, if you don't know, even if you're given a, a, a year or two years to do the exam, you can't really um, pass that without, without the basic knowledge. So I didn't spend much time on that subject and I just rely like the, the question is multiple choice anyway. So you have a 20, 25 uh, chance of getting a correct answer for its, uh, for its subject. And then what I did was I calculated what's the, what's the total score. Uh, what's the score for, um, chemistry, thermodynamics and then electrical. And then I, I, I subtracted that, uh, possible, uh, uh, score from from the total questions and then if I think uh, I think it was only 80 questions at that time and then the the questions for chemistry thermodynamics and electrical engineering 
I think there are only about six or seven questions for those subjects. So even if I got uh, wrong answers for all those subjects, um, if I focus my, my time and my energy on the other subjects, which I have um, I, I, at least an idea, um, I, I would still have a bigger chance of passing the exam, even, with, even if I, I got wrong all the questions for those other subjects. So for the... Um, for the study guides, if you look at the if you go exam references, where is it? Exam references, exam. So each discipline has a like a study guide, but like they have this like thirty dollars, thirty dollars for civil practice exam, chemical practice exam. If I remember correctly, if you once you are registered with um, in CES to take the fundamentals of the um, engineering exam, they would uh, send you a a um, a study guide that you can use during the exam. So when we had that um, exam, so it was written. So I don't know if you can see this one. So this was sent to me by NCES, and you can you can bring this during the exam and. Um, you can open it, but the problem is trying to find where the where the <laughs> the the pages for a particular topic. Uh, it would just eat your time. So actually, I brought this one during exam, but I didn't really open this one. I just relied on my stock knowledge and. Uh, so the questions really are very basic, like for algebra, like linear equations, like three equations, three unknowns, like that. So it's uh, it's not really that difficult. The only the only problem really, if you are like for example, if you graduate, like when I took this exam in Calgary, uh, there was one Filipino who graduated. Uh, engineering in 19 i think 1978 he's really old at that time when he took the exam and really time is your enemy here so imagine if you graduate like three decades ago before taking the exam i don't know if you can still remember like most of these uh, subjects so probably if, if if you are a practicing engineer, you can this topic here is structural engineering to so technical probably it's uh, it's easy, but like um, mathematics, um, economics, I myself I I I totally forget all of these uh, um, subjects here. So when I took this exam, I just relied like um, for mathematics. Uh, statics. If I will just focus my time and energy on getting correct answers on these particular topics, then I still have a bigger chance of passing the exam. And uh, I did pass the exam. So for um, preparing the exam as well, you can buy um i bought a book by 
I think BPI, no, BPI plus. Yeah, this one here. So, so far, they are the most known um, company who would, uh, I think they are conducting lectures as well to prepare you for the exam. So they have this, uh, um, you can buy some like reading materials from them, but the only problem for me was um, the way it was presented, uh, it's it's different from what I'm used to. So I was lucky that at that time when I prepared for the exam, one of my neighbor uh, went home and I asked her to um, bring the books that I used during the, um, when I took the licensure exam, for civil engineering in the Philippines uh, in 2002, uh, oh, May 2002. So this review books, I don't know if you can see this one. So these are from um, Bisabili Engineering Review Center. So I took my um, review with um, the um, like in Cebu with uh, Bisabil Engineering Review Center. So I asked my neighbor to bring those uh, these um, references. And um, just because I'm, I'm used to like how, how the, the problems are presented and it's easy for me to remember. Because in, in like references I bought from PPI to pass, um, um, I think, what's the name? Fundamentals if is it in I'm no longer familiar with this website. It is I mean it has long been. Um it's been like ten years since I look at the website and it's way different now. So so again, like, so basically I used my old uh, review books. And then what I did also was, so if you look at these topics, like these subjects here, like mathematics and stati statics, like uh, analytic geometry, single, single variable calculus. So what I did was each topic here, I will search this in YouTube and you will see a lot of, um, um discussions lectures in youtube regarding these topics here so if you go um say statics and you search resultants of four system so you would find a lot of uh, discussions like tutorials in youtube youtube for each uh, topic here so um one of the website i, I frequently visit was or not website a a youtube channel was um yale courses youtube let's go to youtube youtube.com and then there is one professor here like uh, I think in physics and he really explains everything like all like the best uh, or I would say the, the the yeah the best explanation I would say he explained very well like all the topics um, I think Yale courses uh, so this is where I studied when I uh, for the um, hydraulics uh, subject, uh, this one here, Fundamentals of Physics with uh, um, Ramamutri Shankar. And he explains like, the subject like really, really, like pretty well. And you would easily understand. So, I mean, you're, you're, you might still have your, your, um, 
your um, basic understand basic understanding of like all the topics but uh, sometimes uh, if you are not uh, practicing your profession you would definitely forget everything but um, once uh, you see uh, some of these lectures uh, it will just come back uh, right away like you will remember um, so yeah like i said um right now it's only um a 6 hour exam and it's uh, online you can uh, you can sit from i think i don't know where the designated examination uh, center here but um before in alberta it was a it was a written exam and there are only two uh testing center it was in uh, Edmonton and one in Calgary and uh, I took my uh, fundamentals of the exam in Calgary in 2012. So the only difference is this right now it's a uh, computer based and then a six hour long exam. Before it was uh, uh, eight hour and the morning are um, the general engineering subjects and then in the afternoon it would be uh, discipline specific. So if you are, say, if you are a civil engineer, then you would, uh, the, the questionnaire that will be given to you will be um, fundamentals of uh, engineering exam for civil and then um, civil structural, I think. Or was it the, let me check, I can't remember if. They separated all the um, so P E. Oh, it is in the PE exam that uh, they separated the, the sub-discipline. So, so when I took the PE exam, that's the last exam for you to get the um, license in the U.S. Um, I took the PE civil uh, structural. And if you are inclined uh, with construction or um, transportation or the technical, so you can just select this one whichever you think uh, you have a better chance of passing actually when you when you select all this um discipline here you can you can select which which one you think you have a bigger chance of passing so um ever since i graduated i've been practicing structural engineering so i took the pe civil uh, structural so if if your experience is more on construction um then you can you can take this one but we will discuss um more on this uh, pe exam uh, in a se separate uh, video i will uh, i will explain to you the uh, the steps i did um in getting a license in the us but um so basically the the exam the fundamentals of the general exam that i took for when i applied uh, uh, for my license here in Alberta is this exactly the same exam um, that is required for you to um, so once you graduate in the US uh, you have to take the uh, you have to pass the fundamentals of engineering exam and then if you pass then that's the time where your um, uh, experience will be counted uh, uh, in order to get your um, uh, uh, full uh, license so uh, so if you go back to um the Apega website, um you will uh, you will see here everything you need, uh, every questions you might have with regards to um um taking the if exam. So most likely, if um if you are I think I I I I don't know anybody that uh, uh, have applied with a big, uh, um who was not asked to take the fundamentals of engineering exam. Um, 
I have friends. Um, will they apply some 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 uh, disciplines were uh, required to uh, take some courses? So I have a friend who is a an electrical engineer. Uh, uh, like he graduated uh, the same school as mine. Um, he was required to take I think five courses on top of the um fundamentals of engineering exam but for civil uh, discipline um there's really not like not much changes since like the 1800s probably so it's more likely that if you are a graduate of civil engineering you will not be required to take some courses but definitely you will be required to take the fundamentals of engineering exam um what else so with regards to so like i said in my previous video i was asked by the board to take the fundamentals of engineering exam and then the um national uh, professional practice exam that's the ethics exam and then uh, one year um north american experience so when I was still in the Philippines, I was working with a U.S.-based company, and um, I asked if uh, I asked if my experience back home would be counted as as basically to to meet the one year uh, North American ex uh, North American experience, considering that although I was in the Philippines, but our project or like we design uh buildings that will be constructed in the u.s so southern states uh, texas um oklahoma louisiana like that but the lady at the front desk uh, told me that i have to be physically present um in either uh, canada or the u.s uh, before they would consider uh, my experience, so some, some like when I before I took the exam, I already started working in an engineering firm, and um, luckily when I when I finished my or I passed the exam, um, the experience I got before passing the exam they counted that one, but I knew somebody um whose experience before passing the exam was not uh, was not approved and after passing the exam he has to gain i think he was asked uh, to get at i think two years two years of um experience under direct direct super supervision of a professional member so it it really depends like um uh maybe sometimes whoever review your um um credentials and experience i i really don't know how they would do it but it's not it's not a standard sometimes they would ask you one year of experience uh, north american experience sometimes uh two years and then sometimes they would uh, approve your uh, experience before passing the um fundamentals of engineering exam sometimes they won't so it really depends so i think that's it and uh, if you have questions just uh, let me know and uh, thank you